Hello YouTube, this is Victor, I hope you're well. Uh, sorry, there's a kind of music in the background here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about different kind of aircraft, where can you fly with them and, and uh, the longest route in the world. Welcome aboard. So depending when you're flying, usually airlines will use two types of aircraft. One that can do short haul uh, to mid haul and usually run five hours and another one can do long haul. If you fly short haul and you're flying an Airbus, most likely you'll be in the 320 families. That means the Airbus 318, 19, 20 or 21, the same aircraft but just a little bit longer. If you fly Boeing, uh, it will be mostly the uh, Boeing 737 which is quite popular aircraft and now uh, it exists in different versions and different lengths. If you're flying long haul, uh, Airbus got mostly three aircraft they operate, the Airbus 330. Uh, I also have the Airbus 350, which is brand new. Uh, and uh, you have probably heard about the double-decker, the Airbus 380, which is a massive plane. If you fly Boeing, Boeing still operates 767, which is an older aircraft, about 20 years technology, 20 years old technology. Still very good, I used to work on it, I love it. Um, the Dreamliner, this is Boeing 787, the mythical uh, 747, it's still quite a few rounds, and then uh, also the, uh, the 777, which is very, very popular. But it doesn't mean you're going to be uh, doing a short flight on a, on a small plane. You can be on a big plane. If you fly in Japan, uh, some routes are very, very popular. And uh, some uh, big aircraft like 747 will just do domestic flights because the spite are always full. So um, also if you live on the East Coast, let's say you're flying from um, New York to Paris, you leave, per you leave New York in the evening and the aircraft will be back on the East Coast the next day around noon. Uh, which means uh, we need to use the aircraft during the day, so this aircraft might do either a domestic flight uh, or might go to the West Coast with domestic passengers and then continue its journey to uh, Asia. Uh, it's very important for an airline that the aircraft fly as much as possible and aircraft on the ground doesn't bring any money. So they will have uh, massive software to optimize the flying time. Also, uh, why flight to Latin America are a little bit more expensive? Just because uh, we need to think when we plan a flight about connections. There might be enough connections for passengers when they arrive somewhere. So you fly to Latin America, usually you leave North America in the evening, get there in the morning, let's say you're going to Buenos Aires, but if you get there in the evening, you won't have any connection. So the plane lands in the morning. Unfortunately, if you fly during the day, it will be too late when it gets into North America to get any connections. So the aircraft will remain in Buenos Aires, Latin America, for most of the day on the ground, parked somewhere, and then we'll fly only at night to go back to North America, get there in the morning and offer connections. But the aircraft will stay quite a while on the ground and then have a massive cost. That's why usually, on average, flight to Latin America are quite expensive and sometimes more expensive than flights to Asia or Europe. What are the longest flights? Um, the two longest flights in the world, uh, the first one is operated by Qatar Airways. It's actually a flight between Doha, which is a main hub in the main airport, and Auckland in New Zealand because New Zealand is quite remote in the bottom of the world. Uh, it is, uh, look at my notes, 2000, uh, sorry, 9,026 miles. It's quite a long flight. The second flight is operated by um, Emirates, uh, and it's Dubai also going to Auckland, which is a little bit shorter, 8,819 miles. And then the next flight is not existing yet, but it's coming up soon, as it will be operated by United Airlines, and it will be between Los Angeles and uh, Singapore, and will be around 8,700 miles. If you fly those flights, if you're on those aircraft, it's a very long flight, so make sure you're, uh, you have lots of books, uh, you may be on your iPad or your tablet, uh, and then uh, you stretch and you walk a lot in the cabin just to relax your leg if you're sitting for quite a long time. So I got a question uh, a few weeks ago. Someone was asking me the aircraft was supposed to be full. There were no more tickets on sale. However, there were quite a few empty seats. Um, remember, there's something else that flies with you and it's in bottom. It's called the cargo. So airlines will bring some cargo, which uh, will bring them some good revenue. And sometimes it's quite interesting to sacrifice a few seats and not sell them and have the cargo. Also, if it's a very long flight, if we go back to uh, the uh, Qatar Airways uh, between Doha and Auckland, um, they will need to have some empty seat because even if there's no cargo, they need extra fuel, and this fuel's got a weight, and then the weight uh, needs to be calculated in uh, to, to operate all the way for such a long flight. So uh, they will have them empty seats. The bonus for you is, well, most likely if you're flying down the back, you might have a chance to have an empty seat, one or two empty seats next to you, so that's quite a bonus, a little bit more comfort. For us, uh, using staff travel, uh, we'll see empty seats, but unfortunately, we still can't get on board because we'll add some weight, uh, so it's a bummer, but that's how it works. 
And uh, this is the video of the week. If you have any questions, feel free, ask them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, give a thumb up. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so. It's free. You'll get to see a video every week and I'll see you next week. Have a good day. Bye.